I've been on a huge One Piece kick recently, not gonna lie. I just watched some of Whitebeard's backstory in the anime and it was so dope. Watching him fight Roger was like top tier. I mean, I already liked him in Marineford, but young Whitebeard was built different. And since, you know, you guys loved when I made three sword style real, and since Gear 5 literally came out, uh, as of recording this yesterday, I figured it was about time that I did another One Piece video here on the channel. So let's see how to fight like Whitebeard in real life. Because you quake when you hear the name Whitebeard! <laughs> What's up guys, it's the old ninja wearing aviators and superhero hat and welcome to the Fight Like a Superhero web series, a series where I show you how to be one of your favorite characters but in real life and teach you a move that you can learn in your backyard. So Whitebeard is obviously built different. The man was a solid 21 foot 10 inches tall and built like a tank with abs and he's in his 70s. Well, he was in his 70s. But when I say built like a tank, I mean it. His durability was next level. Taking 465 injuries and still being able to keep fighting through pretty much all of them. Well, except the last one. Like, he was even able to fight through a hole being blown in his chest by a human volcano. This man is not normal. Now, I'm not saying we can get to that level of inhuman. Hopefully, there's no men blowing up volcanoes on our chest. But we definitely need to build up our durability if we're going to get anywhere similar to Whitebeard. Do you have the slightest idea who our forces are up against? A squirt like you is gonna get slaughtered real easy. So we're gonna start with the most extreme body conditioning that we possibly can. We're going to mix Muay Thai training with Kung Fu monk training. Muay Thai practitioners are able to kick bats and break them with ease without breaking a single bone. And so we're gonna be training with them to get their conditioning techniques, but that's just on top of the monk training we're gonna have to receive because even Muay Thai practitioners can't hold a candle to some of the crazy things that monks are able to do with their durability. Shaolin monks are able to sit in boiling water, lay on spears, rest a spear directly in the neck, and take kicks and punches to even the groin, like literally anywhere, and they can just brush it off. Their training is monster level and going to be exactly what we need to get even close to the level that Whitebeard is at, but Whitebeard is truly known as the strongest man, like that's his real claim to fame. And again, it's because he is Hemothy himself. He can smack grown men so far that they fall off boats, stop ships with one hand, create dents in the ground casually, and blocks attacks from literal giants with one hand. Yes, giants that are even bigger than Whitebeard, reaching up to 65 feet tall on average so some of them are even taller you're blocking my view move so we're gonna need the best strength training that we can possibly find and we're gonna become strongmen weightlifters and powerlifters strongman training will give us a nice overall strength training giving us practice with lat pull down stone lifts tire flips and tons of other you know stereotypical strength feats this one is obvious for us but i wanted to go a little bit farther because, I mean, he is Whitebeard. Weightlifters will focus on lifting heavy weights on barbells above their head, being able to lift at max nearly a quarter ton above their head. And powerlifting focuses on squats, bench press, and deadlifts. At peak, being able to squat and deadlift nearly half a ton. Now, those are the records in those categories. I'm not gonna lie, you're not gonna shatter all the records. At least you're probably not. But you're definitely gonna need to get close. Oh, and Whitebeard can jump, like, like, really jump. And so you're gonna wanna join the high jump team as well while you're, you know, in the track and field section. Maybe sprinkle in a little shot put and you might be getting somewhat close to Whitebeard himself. I'm telling you, this man is Timothy incarnate. But with this fraction of the strength that Whitebeard has, it's time to work in his combat skills because yes, he also has combat skills. 
Is it needed for a man this strong? Not really, but we're gonna have him anyway. Starting with his unarmed combat, Whitebeard has one of the most powerful devil fruits in all of One Piece, the Guru no Mi or the Quake Quake Fruit. And if I didn't pronounce that right, I'm sorry. I'm sure I'm gonna get roasted in the comments. <laughs> This is the most powerful Paramecia Devil Fruit, able to literally tear apart the world with a single punch. <laughs> now, obviously, we aren't going to be able to punch continental plates apart, but we still need some powerhouse punches. So we're going to start with boxing. Newgate doesn't really throw kicks all that much. He can, but he definitely doesn't rely on them. So we're definitely going to put those hands to work with our boxing skills. And boxers have some of the strongest punches in the world. In fact, Francis Ganu set the world record for the most powerful punch, lifting a six foot four, 250 pound man in the air before knocking him out in the first round. Now, he did this feat in the UFC, but he is truly a boxer through and through, which is the reason he was able to do that. I mean, with a record of 17 and zero, you can't argue with those kind of results. So we obviously can't skip on skills like that. We're also going to need to learn how to use the Naginata, a staff with a giant machete on the end of it. The Naginata is a traditional Japanese pole weapon that dates back to 794, yes, like, like the year. 794, older than the Crusades. So this weapon has truly been able to stand the absolute test of time. And lucky for us, it's old enough to actually have an entire martial art dedicated to just that, the Naginata Jutsu. The style also dating back to before 1000 AD and staying active and trained even till this day, even becoming used in a combat sport today, reaching all across the world having 12 European championships and seven world championships in the last 30 years. Now, putting all of this together should get you looking at least somewhat close to the world's strongest man himself. Well, the training and some really good genetics. Now let's get outside and train like Whitebeard. Hey, I just figured I'd let you guys know that there's new merch in the store. Like if you didn't even know I had a store, I have a merch store and there's new merch in it. So definitely go check it out. There might be something you like, there might not be, but you know, you never know until you know. So go check it out, links down in the description. And now we're outside and we're gonna go over two different combos to showcase his two different fighting styles now. One is gonna be with our hands because Whitebeard can definitely throw those hands. And the other is gonna be with my Nata Naginata. Yes, that was a terrible joke, but here we go. First with our hands, we're gonna make sure we have a correct fist because that's where we're gonna be throwing punches. And you wanna make sure you're hitting with the first two knuckles, not the flat fist and definitely not the pinky. The first two knuckles are gonna be your target zones. Like when you hit your target, that's what you use. Um, we're gonna be using a simple kickboxing combination that anyone can pick up. Starting off, you're gonna have your hands up, guarding your upper body and head. You do not want to have your hands attached to your head. This is something that boxers do when they have gloves on because the gloves can absorb the impact. But when you don't have gloves, which Whitebeard doesn't, getting hit is just you digging your knuckles into your head, which won't actually help you. So make sure you're not connected, but your hands are still up. You're gonna start off with a jab using your front hand, the way you decide what hand's your front. You look at your legs, you obviously have staggered legs, or at least hopefully you will have some staggered legs. So change the angle real quick. You have staggered um, feet position and the leg that's in front is gonna be the hand that's in front. So your front leg for me is my left leg because I fight with my, um, well, I fight both ways, but for right now we're gonna fight traditionally with my right hand in the back, left hand in the front. Leading in with our jab, you're gonna twist your hip forward, pushing as you fire that jab forward. Notice I'm still rotating my front leg using rotation for power. Keep those hands up, straight out. You don't wanna wind back. You just wanna punch straight out because your jab is all about speed. Next, we're gonna go into our cross. Our cross means the hand that's in the back comes across our body to do our attack. So we have our jab rotating with that hip. Again, rotating, bang, and then you're gonna rotate the opposite side for our cross. As you switch hands, your 
guard switches as well. So whatever hand's out, the other hand should be protecting you because you don't want to get hit. So you have your jab, your cross, and then we're going to rotate a little bit more for our hook. Keeping our elbow out, punching across, bang. Keeping our elbow and our hip connected and not just firing our arm by itself. You actually want to rotate as you do that punch. So we have one, two, three. Now that we have three, we're going to finish them off with a powerhouse uppercut using our back hand. So one, two, three, powerhouse uppercut. We're going to connect our elbow and our hip. We're going to shift forward, putting our hip and elbow in line and pushing off with our back foot to fire our uppercut. This is using your entire body weight behind your arm. So the reason we line up our, our fist, our elbow and our hip is so we can use our entire weight into the punch instead of just kind of using our shoulder like this. You don't want to just use your shoulder that doesn't give you a lot of power. So our full combination, rotating that jab, cross, hook, lining up the fist, elbow and hip, bang. Finishing with an uppercut and again, still rotating to get as much power as you can. All the way through, you have one, two, three, four. Just like that, always keeping your guard up whenever you're not throwing hands. And again, this isn't my preferred way of fighting. I prefer and uh, relate to a different style personally, but for Whitebeard, this is definitely the way to go. Now, Harnada Naginata. <laughs> We're just gonna do a simple three strike combo that will allow you to bring the house down and deal tons and tons of damage with your Naginata because again, Whitebeard is the powerhouse of One Piece. So we gotta rep right. Now note, I am not trained in specifically Naginata Jutsu. This is one way to use it. However, it is not by any means specifically Naginata Jutsu. If you wanna be more specific, you'd have to find someone that has that training and sadly that's not me, but I will teach you what I can to get you started. Holding just under the center of your bow staff and at the, towards the bottom so you have extended range with your Naginata, you're gonna start off swiping at the head, coming straight across, using your right hand that's closest to the middle to push straight out as your left hand pulls in to underneath your armpit, coming across, way. Then we're going to rotate, pulling it underneath our opposite armpit, so our left hand rotates to underneath our armpit and we sweep towards the leg. So this rotation is fluid, and going from one straight line to the other straight line. We're going for a head strike, which is making them duck or lean back, and then going for the leg, which is what we opened up. Um, using these long range weapons to move your opponent to do what you want them to do will allow you to get much better strikes and, and allow you much more time to move your big weapon around. So now we have our head strike to make them lean back or step back. We have our leg strike to get them off balance or even get a, get a strike to that leg to uh, truly disable them from being able to move very fast or come in anywhere close because we don't want them close. We want them at the edge of our blade. One, switch, two. We're going to rotate, pointing our uh, staff behind us and our left hand straight up, right hand behind the head, just like so, so that as we pull down and step forward, we will pull with our left hand into our armpit and push down with our right hand. This will be our final strike, cutting straight through our target. So we have one, rotate under the opposite armpit, two, and three all the way through, one, two, three. Ooh, my hat is getting in the way, but when you do it full speed, it'll look like this. And there we have it. We have our Naginata combination for you guys to just get the handle, to get the, you know, the basics. Like I said before, I am not a Naginata practitioner or Naginata Jutsu practitioner. So if you want true Naginata Jutsu, you're gonna go have to find someone that is. But it's Texas and it's super hot outside. So let's get 
get back inside. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I noticed that y'all seem to like this series, so if you want me to do more or a specific character, let me know down in the comments. I do have a running list of characters that I'm gonna get to, and so if you want me to add yours to the list, I will always take your suggestions and put them to the top if possible, if I can figure out how to do their fighting style. Some of y'all have picked some hard characters, like I'm still trying to figure out Luffy. And of course, subscribe to see those episodes, obviously. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore, this is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. The One Piece! The One Piece is real! And if you like this video, check out this one about Zoro and his three sword style. Or this one all about the straw hat cook, Black Leg Sanji. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one. Father than I ever thought I could have been. Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pink. Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim. Out here flashing change while your boy been in the gym. Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to...